gobble, yeah. gobble, 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 gobble. First up. Okay. Um, we got these cafe lights. Erin, our resident mermaid, uh, really likes them, and I kind of think they're cool too. If you want something that's you know similar to the bulbs you see hanging out, you know, they're cafe lights because they're often used on the outside of cafes to illuminate. Um, but usually they have um, LEDs inside of them that kind of make them look like Edison bulbs. But you're like, I want RGB LEDs because I love NeoPixels. Well, now we have uh, NeoPixel cafe lights. Drive them from your favorite Arduino, Arduino compatible, WLED, whatever. They come with um, weatherproof connectors on the end and they can plug end to end. So each one of them has 20 LEDs, but you can like plug them to make them as long as you want. Inside um, is conformal coated, uh, you know, triple RGB LEDs. So one thing is because there's three LEDs in series, you need to use 12 volts to power them. Also because the cable runs are going to be so long um, that you want to have um, a high voltage. So you can't run them at 5 volts, you need 12 volts power. And the signal needs to be 5 volts. So if you're not using a 5 volt level shifted output, uh, you'll need to shift your output to a clean 5 levels because these are... They don't like 3.3 volts. They're very picky. Next up. Okay. Next up, we have another version. Um, this one has um, RGB W LEDs in it. So if you go here, it's you'll see. difference between the two. Yeah. So this one has LEDs that have a fourth element that's a warm white LED. And they're still conformal coded. Because they have four channels, not three channels, and for reasons I don't completely agree with, but I am living with, they don't use the WS2811 NeoPixel protocol, they use the TM1814, which is supported by stuff like WLED and there's Arduino libraries. We don't specifically have a library for it, but we will have some example code. Um, it's an inverted NeoPixel signal. You might want to pick up one of our NeoPixel, um, sorry, smart pixel shifters and inverters because that way, um, that way you can use, you might be able to use NeoPixel code and adapt it. We'll, we'll write it in the tutorial how, how to do it. But basically right. these are cool because they have warm white LED ability, so they have like a really nice warm light. But the problem is, is that you, you can't use just standard NeoPixel WS28XXX um, code with them. So mm -hmm. honestly, if you don't need that warm white LED, just get like the normal NeoPixel ones. Um, they work totally fine. Okay. Whoa. Cool. Uh, next up. <laughs> okay. Next up, um, so people already saw this and we're already sold out because we put a couple hundred in, but we got the Pico 2W. If you swat one, uh, they're not in stock right now. Um, they will be we're again. Live. They will be again. Believe me, we just got another shipment of 2,000 coming in a couple days. We'll get them into the shop. Sign up. Um, there's the update to the Pico W is the Pico 2W, which now has the RP2350. This makes it actually kind of usable. Um, not that like, the Pico W wasn't usable, but if you're using CircuitPython or MicroPython, it was a, a bit of a squeeze because you need to have the full Wi-Fi stack in Flash, and the Flash is only two megabytes, and you didn't have that much RAM left over after all the crypto stuff. The 2350 does a much, much better job. It has twice as much RAM, which is great because not only can you do all the IoT stuff, um, so the, the Wi-Fi configuration stuff, um, but you can also uh, have leftover memory to do like JSON parsing and stuff. Another thing is, is that I don't even know if they even got like the BLE and Bluetooth Classic. Like, you couldn't load it at the same time. That might be possible now that there's more memory because you can have multiple firmwares on the flash chip. And the flash chip is twice as big. It's four megabytes now. So all in all, um, a very worthy update. Um, I would strongly recommend uh, if you are doing projects with a Pico W. This is basically a drop in replacement. We have CircuitPython support for it already. Easiest and way to as get far as we, online. As far as we can tell, it's um, perfect. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a perfect upgrade. Um, and you just get a better, faster chip with more memory, more flash, more everything. And uh, the same uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth module as before. Yeah. Easiest way to start doing fun stuff online with a microcontroller. Yes. With and great CircuitPython, Python, MicroPython, yeah. and Arduino support. All righty. To start a show, besides you, Lady Data, our community, our customers, our team, people who share all the things that are in their head with the world to make it slightly better, that's what we're all trying to do, is the BQ25185 uh, solar USB DC LiPo charger with a 5 volt boost converter. Um, so this is a little bit like a 
less expensive, but also kind of better and more flexible power boost um, 1000 or 500C. I've kind of upgraded all the components. So you can use USB-C, you can use DC power, you can use solar power. Um, this is a solar power supporting chip. It's very flexible about uh, what voltage you use. So it's, you know, you don't have to worry about um, the previous uh, like power boost series was very sensitive. You couldn't go above five volt charging. This one, if you fluctuate up to 18 volts, it's totally fine. Um, although it's a linear charger. And there's a little boost converter on the output, which, you know, which will give you five volts, uh, one amp output. So it's a tiny little board that kind of does everything you want with a light poly or a lithium ion battery. It charges by default with one amp, although you can set that to 500 milliamps if you want. You plug in the battery, you charge it, you get five volts out. When the power is uh, plugged in, it will automatically use the uh, USB or DC or solar power to um, input into the five volt boost. So you get like the highest um, efficiency, like you don't end up charging, discharging your battery. Um, and it's nice and small with lots of mounting holes. So it's, I think, going to be a good solution to people who are like, look, I just want basically a DIY power pack that I can use solar or USB or DC power, get five volts out, and it doesn't like auto shut off if the current draws too low. Um, so it's nice and efficient. And uh, so far, I'm really liking this um, LiPo charger. It's been really good. And I've used this boost converter chip for a long time. It's also uh, very reliable. So a nice little all-in-one package to make your five volt projects portable. And that's new products. Gobble, 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 gobble